Hey everybody, it's your girl Angie. Welcome back to Kiss My Cheeks TV. Let's jump right into Real Housewives of Potomac. This is The Reunion, part two. Part two was not as good as part one. Part two gave me a little bit. I had a lot of eye rolling. I finally learned the definition of gaslighting because <laughs> I always thought gaslighting because I'm thinking of like when you throw gasoline on the charcoal and you ignite the fire. I always thought gaslighting was talking shit and, you know, ramping somebody up for a reaction. <laughs> and people would always tell me forever I was using gaslighting wrong. And finally, I was watching, I was watching somebody video and they explained it. They explained that gaslighting is kind of like revisionist history where you are trying to make someone believe something happened in a different way to make them go crazy, to make them seem like they crazy. I like my definition of gaslighting better, but oh, let's move on from that. Um, we start the episode right back up where Andy is asking Giselle how she feels about all this new information about Jamal. And I, it's very clear that Andy likes Giselle. I think Andy likes the messiest bitches on shows because he loves a Nini. He loves a Kenya. He loves a Teresa Judice. You know, he loves the messy bitches. So it's very clear that he likes Giselle because <laughs> he didn't go in on Giselle the way a moderator or a host of a reunion should have went in with some follow-up questions. Giselle is not a good liar. Andy is asking you how you feel <laughs> about this information in this relationship. And you over here talking about you been over your divorce and communication issues are your fault. Like the only communication issue you all seem to have is do you have a good signal to talk on the phone? Do I have enough service to talk to Jamal in my phone? Anyway, <clears throat> Giselle says she don't care nothing about this affair. And I said, Giselle don't care about the affair because... Hell, I don't care what the fuck my ex doing. <laughs> if you ain't with him, you ain't with him. Um, and she said, when they talk tonight, it's going to be fine. And I'm more concerned, not about it being fine, but are you all really going to talk tonight? It doesn't seem like you all stay in communication. <sighs> Let's get on over to Ashley. It's Ashley's segment. Um, I feel like Ashley's marriage is Ashley's marriage. Some people have weird ass marriages. Not everybody's marriage is traditional. Not everybody believes in fidelity. You know, a lot of people do bring in side pieces to their bedrooms. That's why the whole, you see Monique, she open. Be with whoever you want to be. Just let me know. Just don't embarrass me. You know, it's very clear that Ashley's marriage is not a traditional marriage. So I don't know why you all want her to defend her marriage. She definitely does not have to defend Michael, but in a way she does because she want everybody else to defend their husband and tell they business, defend their business. But um, it does not bother me <laughs> that Michael is in Vegas with a stripper in the room because... It's bitches out here that y'all know in your job, some of y'all cousins. It's some of y'all. Who man is cheating right now? It ain't his first time. It ain't his second time. It probably ain't his third, fourth, or fifth. Some of y'all bitches, man, ain't even bringing the coins. Y'all out at y'all job, and they got hoes coming in the house while you at work. And y'all asses still ain't left his ass. But y'all want Ashley to leave her millionaire. Now, I ain't saying what you should put up with, what you shouldn't put up with. All I know is I only give a fuck about what go on in my house. <laughs> so if Ashley wants to fuck around with Michael, have open relationship 
a threesome relationship, if she just want her man to cheat in peace, that's Ashley business. And let's move on. Um, Ashley, one thing you shouldn't do, you shouldn't lie for your man. Just, just be honest. You got the same thing with Karen where most people really don't give a fuck about <laughs> what everybody else talking about, but just be honest. I don't believe Michael was at no wedding. Talking correct in English. I don't believe Michael was at a friend's wedding. I believe Michael does not want to be on the hot seat for the ass grabbing. At some point, it's going to cost you your job. Um, keep your husband in check on the ass grabbing, that part. You cannot walk around sexually assaulting people. I don't care if that is a zaddy, a daddy. I 100% agree with Candace when Candace says... He is a producer on this show and he wants to keep his job. Sometimes people, it ain't like we ain't had a whole Me Too movement. Sometimes people will downplay a situation because they want to keep their job because usually the most powerful or the richest, those people get the slap on the wrist and everyone else gets to be fired. Um, Ashley says she cheated too. I don't care. Like I said, they have a weird ass, weird ass marriage. I don't care who cheated, who cheats, I don't care. Um, they asked Wendy something, but I said, don't, Wendy don't need to account for nothing until she explains the your kind. See, that's the question Andy needs to be asking. He's talking about all this other bullshit that we'll get to later, but you don't address some key things that needs to be addressed. I don't care about you talking about a, calling me a bitch and I should have brought my baby. You should have brought your baby. What did you mean about your kind? I still want to know that. Moving on. Um, everybody's saying he did sleep with the stripper. It ain't no way the stripper spent the night in the room and asked for money and they ain't sleep together. I don't care <laughs> if he did or if he didn't. That's Ashley business. She ain't going nowhere. Leave that woman alone. Um, who, who did, um, Katie have sex with? <clears throat> it wasn't Ashley. She would have been a good pick. Um, I'm going to vote Robin. Let's move on. Um, why do they care? Oh, at the end of it, Andy is asking, well, if Michael cheats again, you're going to leave him, right? And I'm like, why do you care? Like, Michael can cheat 10 times. And if Ashley stays with him 10 times, ain't that Ashley business? Why do y'all care about her prenup, her postnup? We've already seen Ashley sign something for another 10 years. Like, I don't care. Now, now we get to my favorite part of the show. Karen gets a good read in on Giselle. Andy is, you know, asking about Ashley's family and blah, 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 blah. We get to the point where, you know, Karen and Giselle arguing about something. Why are you being mean? Why are you being defensive? Why is that your word of the reunion? You know, some bullshit. And so Andy is trying to break it up like, look, you root for Giselle's family, right? Of course I root for Giselle's family. I just want it to be a real family. <laughs> I hollered. That was a hollered moment. But the best part of it was your good girlfriend, your good crying click buddy, gave the, oh, uh, <laughs> like Candace, Candace's laugh. When Karen said, I just want it to be a real family, that took me out times two. That was hilarious. Um, okay, the end of Ashley, the cameraman's ass grab. <sighs> they showed the old footage. I'm like, that was that's what I was talking about last season. Okay, Robin. <sighs> two things happened at at the house last summer, whenever it was. Either Monique has cameras in her basement and she deleted the footage, or Monique is telling the truth and she does not have cameras in her basement. But A or B, either one is the true statement. It's nothing in me that does not believe Michael did not grab that cameraman's ass. And what's going to fuck you up, Michael, is believe it or not, you have set up a precedent that is going to get you caught up 
in the bullshit because it's going to be somebody that see the millions. They're going to see the coins and they just, all they're going to have to say is Michael touch my ass. Give me 50,000. Give me 50,000. He touched my ass and Michael could not have probably not have done it. He probably did do, it. but <laughs> you're opening yourself up for the bullshit because you're now making it very easy for people to believe. Like, I don't care about the camera footage or not. I believe he did it. And that's just what I believe. Um, let's move on from that. <sighs> Karen segment. Everyone wants to know, you know, what they feel about Karen's new house in Potomac. Everyone loves Karen's house. We like it better than the last one. And Robin says that it's cozy. And I'm like, bitch, you the last one I need to be talking about anybody's house until you get a house and you're not in the apartment. Then you can comment on someone else's home. But until then, keep counting your coins, bitch. Keep saving them, paying off your debt. You, you be the one to shut the fuck up. I think it's very sad. I think it's very sad and very telling to Bravo, if nobody else, that we have watched part one and part two of a reunion and Robin has not had a segment to the first. Robin hasn't had a storyline. She chimed in here and there. Yeah, girl, I saw that. That's what I'm talking about last season. What is the meaning of all this? What is your motivation? Like, Robin does not have a storyline. Like, when we get to her segment, are we going to see, what, 30 seconds of film? <laughs> Like, bitch, you had a tax debt that you did not talk about. And you had some funky-ass hats. Moving on from Robin. I got mad a little bit. Andy has the nerve to ask Karen, do you have disdain for Ray's dick? And I'm like, of all the bullshit you can ask, you want to ask that. <laughs> no one cares about that. And I'm like, really, Andy, that was tasteless. Like, you want to go there with Karen, but you didn't you didn't dig deep for your girl Giselle and all this other shit. Moving on. So now Andy wants to know how the Bravo checks affect people's marriage. Because Karen is explaining that, you know, Ray, you know ready to retire and Karen is starting up businesses and if Ray wants to pay her her money back she want to take it but you know she's been a spoiled wife for 20 years and it's nothing to help her husband. like to me that's spoken like a true wife a true wife like my husband has taken care of me and my children for all of these years Spoiled me. Put me up in Potomac where y'all bitches out in Baltimore or whatever. Living a good life in Potomac. And he needs a little bit of help and I have it. How would that look as a wife to not help your husband when you have it? Like, and you know, Giselle up there like, yeah, she wants her money. Like, like bitch, you... Let's move on. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna let and see I don't like that y'all call them the green eyed bandits because I don't like it number one because like I know somebody outside Luke, chill out. If he start barking, excuse him. Um my sister has naturally green eyes. She's very fair. Luke, please chill out. Don't tear up my curtains. She's very fair. She has the naturally blonde brown hair like those two have. But my sister doesn't act like that. So when I hear people say the green eyed bandits, it reminds me of my sister. And I'm like, but my sister does not act like these bitches. So I don't, I don't like that. But I don't forgot my whole point. Because Luca over here tearing up my curtains for whoever is outside. <sighs> we talking about the checks. This is another moment that I love. Andy wants to know how you all ladies, you know, you've been on Potomac five seasons. Y'all making some good coins now. How does your husband feel about these coins? 
And Monique is like, that little check, <laughs> you know, that just funds my projects. That ain't really no money. And Andy was like, well, yeah, but I'm sure he's not making the same amount of money when he's playing football. And Monique is like, oh, yes, he is. It's called investments, boo. Investments. You know about those, right? <sighs> that was a little bit of a, a racist moment to me. And I ain't saying Andy racist, but it... It made me feel a certain way that you for one second would think this man is not able to pull the same amount of coins just because he's not running a ball on a football field. Like he doesn't have a brain. And then I said, this is why you bitches don't like Monique. Because this little Bravo check, this little play money, you know, this little... um. Let me go over here and make me a little mommy podcast studio. Something to do in my free time. You know, a little something to play around with, go to the mall. You know, but see, this is you bitches bread and butter. Without Bravo, you wouldn't have no $900,000 tear down tree house. Without Bravo, you wouldn't have no payment plan for the IRS. Without Bravo, you wouldn't be able to get a house without your mama money. Without Bravo, you might not be able to pay off these damn student loans. You better hope Biden forgives them for your ass with the four degrees. You need some student loan forgiveness, Wendy. You know, so that's why y'all hate Monique. Because this little play money, this little something to do. But this is you all's job. Okay. Now, Robin over here talking about her and Juan go 50-50. And I ain't mad at the 50-50, but I'm like, Robin, if anybody, if anybody on this entire franchise need to pay somebody back, it's you, bitch. It's you. You need to be paying 100% of the fucking bills when you done lost all of that man's NBA money. You need to talk about nobody paying nobody anything back. I believe, and I said it on Twitter, I was being a little bit shady. But I'm starting to really believe that's the only reason Juan is marrying your ass. Like, bitch, you ain't about to leave me and wander off with the Bravo checks. No, bitch, we getting married and I'm staying until I get all my money back. <laughs> so, <sighs> you better hope you keep your job because you have no storyline. None. Um, Giselle is over here piping up about... Ray telling Karen he ain't love her before that scene. Who cares? Who cares if that's not the first time Karen has heard Ray say, I don't love you. Bitch, worry about who not loving your ass. Okay. Worry about that. Who is not loving Giselle today? I can tell you a couple. Jamal clearly is not loving you. <laughs> he made it very clear with his cash register receipts that you all are not together. And we know Sherman ain't fucking with your ass. So worry about who not loving you, Giselle. Um, Andy now goes to Wendy and says, well, Wendy, you had a lot of comments about Can I mean, Karen's sexual life. And Wendy is like, I had two comments. And I'm like, bitch, you had two too many. Okay, bitch. Like, what do you mean you had two? You shouldn't be worried about what's going on in their bedroom at all. I don't like Wendy. I don't like her. Now, now Wendy is talking about she too good to talk about sex. Like, I, I, I just don't like talking about sex. And I'm like, bitch, you was one of the bitches who sucked your husband off before Portugal, right? And you ain't had no bit problem saying it on camera, right? Right. <sighs> Moving on. Now it's Monique's turn. The one thing I noticed is that the traumatized bitch talked shit about Monique throughout her entire segment and if Monique would have ran over there and whooped her ass I wouldn't have been mad at it again because you bitch you traumatized you Mary Jane right you need all the post-it notes to get through your day but you sat on this stage and talked shit throughout her entire segment <sighs> The one thing I hated about Monique's segment the most is that we had to see Monique be friends with Giselle all over again. And that's one thing that 
I still don't understand because I ain't got to be, I could be cordial with a bitch at work, but I ain't got to be your friend. Like I ain't going, if I don't like you at work, I can guarantee you, Angie ain't going out to lunch with you. I ain't got to sit next to you in the corporate meetings. If I don't like you at best, you will get a, Hey, and you, you ain't even getting no good night. Cause I ain't trying to see you on my way out. <sighs> Moving on. So, I want to know, Giselle is now saying, because I guess when they did that thing at the lake house and Chris turned the wine bottle upside down, I guess he was insinuating that Monique likes to give oral sex. I feel like I got weave <laughs> in my lipstick. Okay, I got it. I got it. Okay. Um, I didn't get that like the whole time. <laughs> my ass the whole time i thought chris was saying that monique only likes expensive wine and that's why she turns the bottle upside down to see how much it costs that went way over my head <laughs> but when giselle broke it down it was like i think it was so disrespectful that he says that you like to give oral sex no that was candace the whole time i was like bitch shut up because i'm like all of y'all bitches all of y'all bitches outside of Karen was like, when the last time you gave your man a blowjob? Oh, right before we came here. I, I sucked him off right before we came here. You know, ain't nobody else sucking my man off. We're going to be gone a week. He got some right before I came here to Portugal. So I'm like, wait, <laughs> it's disrespectful for a man to say his wife gives him oral sex. But it ain't disrespectful for all of y'all to raise y'all hand kindergarten style for giving blowjobs before Portugal. Okay, I would be more concerned if Chris said Monique did not give blowjobs. I would be more concerned about that. But anyway, let's get over to this plot. And this is where the gaslighting definition comes into play. <sighs> I can't stand it all. I don't understand how Andy can say this plot was never brought to the show no one ever brought up this plot about the trainer and the baby when they just showed a clip of monique not monique but giselle cheesing and grinning well you know i heard that she was running around potomac with her trainer and blah 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 whatever else giselle said like how can how do you wrap your mind andy around trying to make me believe what i just didn't see it was brought to the show. Giselle couldn't wait to bring it to the show. She had pleasure in her confessional bringing it to the show. But Andy wants to make it seem like um, this plot never happened. And somebody, it was either on Twitter, because I, you know I was tweeting. Gone over there to kiss my cheeks TV. You know I was tweeting last night. Um, someone said they believe that... Andy is trying to have revisionist history of this plot because he don't want them Samuels lawyers to come hit Bravo's ass for all of this defamation that could have come to the show. And I believe Monique 100%. I believe Giselle said all of that shit about that baby in that confessional and Bravo cut it short because they, <laughs> you don't play with people with money. You don't play with people who got enough money with you that can play around in court. And the Samuels have it. And they would have been on that ass. What I also don't understand is Candace did a whole live calling it a plot, a plotation, the plottery. Like she used every bit of plot in her statement and she said it was the Bravo girls, but not her. And it wasn't Karen. So that only left Ashley, Giselle, and Robin. But ain't nobody want to bring up this video. No, ain't nobody saw the video. And Monique, I'm surprised the video wasn't in your bond or shit. I would have had it on cue on my cell phone and been like, but what's this? Where my phone? What's this? That's what should have been in the binder. You should have had that video on play. All you should have had to do was 
flip it open and play. What's this? But I, I guess, moving on. Um, one thing, okay, I did say one thing I didn't understand. Monique does have more explaining to do. Like, I'm on your side, Monique, but I don't understand. It's no way in hell. I could have just had a baby. And this bitch, Sharice, is going around telling everybody, I'm fucking my trainer, and it's the trainer's baby. It's not my husband's baby, or I just didn't have a rainbow baby. What does she have? A miscarriage. That's what it's called. She didn't just have a miscarriage. She really had an abortion because the baby wasn't Chris's. Like, there's no way this bitch could be talking this about me. And I'm smiling in a picture with her right next to me. I, and what do you mean it was a Bravo picture? This bitch ain't on Bravo. Sharice hasn't been on the show in years. It's a hole in this story. I don't know what the hole is. It's a missing piece. But I don't understand how hands got put on Candace, the one who you know was not a part of the plot, the plottery, as they say. She didn't give you the heads up, no. She didn't tell you Karen was the one who told you, and yeah, that was your friend, and you can't believe all this. I don't understand how the hands didn't get on Giselle. That's all I don't understand. But let's move on. Um, I need Candace and Wendy to understand one thing because one thing about Monique's segment that opened my eyes a little bit is I don't think Andy likes Monique. I don't. Not the way he was questioning her and not the way he was gaslighting her. That's That's the word. Trying to make her feel like what her truth was, was not the truth. Like trying to make her believe something else. I need Candace and Wendy to know one thing. Because I'm going to say this and it's going to hurt me to say it. I don't need Monique to come back. It's To me, this little check, this little play money, it's not worth your family. It's not worth your mental health. It's not worth you having to walk around wanting to beat a bitch ass because Candace is somebody who will make you want to whoop her ass. And it's it's to me, it's not worth it. I will still follow you on Instagram, girl. I, I love to see you do all that stuff with your children in the Instagram stories. Stay there because you can control what people see there. On this show, Monique, if you come back next season... All you're going to get is more of the same stress. You're only going to have two people in your corner. And to me, it's not going to be worth it for this little check. You know, this play money. If Monique was to do a Tanya, because I did write down, Monique, you need to Tanya these bitches and just not show back up. Like, say, fuck it. Y'all can have it. I don't need it. Um, Candace and Wendy, y'all bitches are next. You two bitches are next. And I don't think you understand it because y'all not playing. See, y'all playing like bad girls clip where for whatever reason, Robin and Giselle are the head bitches in charge. I don't know why. I don't know why, but y'all set it up that way to be. Once they have mean girl Monique off the show, the only two people left to mean girl are you two. Why? Because Karen ain't with the bullshit. Karen will read their asses down. Ashley, Ashley goes along to play along. <laughs> like Ashley, you can like you see how she defends her husband, her marriage. She don't care. You can say whatever you want to say about Ashley. She here for this check. Okay. Candace, you can't handle it. It ain't gonna take too much for them to bully you. And Wendy, get your ducks in order in a row. However, the saying go. Because bitch, next season, if you don't think you think people was in. Monique's business, season two is always the season for the new bitch for some people to spill your tea. So put your seatbelt on, Wendy, 
trust and believe y'all bitches are next let's get to this fight i don't even really want to talk about it everything monique said happened in the fight production came back and said fuck you andy fuck you giselle everything monique said happened they had a clip a clip monique said I got upset because Candace put her hands in my face. She did not put her hands in your face. And then you hear, you see, yes, she did. You can't do that to people. If that bitch said, don't put your hands in my face, you don't put your hands in nobody's face. And the one part that they do not show, and I saw it on Twitter when the fight first went down. Before all this even happened, Candace had another butter knife in her hand clanging it in Monique's face and Wendy took that knife out of Candace's hand and put it over there right there the butter knife in the face would have been enough but uh, you don't remember don't nobody remember that but let's move on I said people are going to believe what they want to believe and they're going to see what they want to see it's some people that can go outside and don't say it. Don't take it back. I ain't even going to say what I was getting ready to say. That was too shady. I ain't going to say it. It's some people that can go outside and you could tell them the sky is blue. But because you fucking said it, they're going to say, nah, bitch, that's purple. Or that's green. Like, Monique can go outside today and say it's a beautiful sunny day. Now the cloud in the sky. And them bitches be like, uh-uh, it was raining. Just because Monique said it. I don't understand how traumatized bitches talk the most shit. I don't understand how you so traumatized, but you so big and bad. And you Like, I promise you, Monique could have got up and did a Porsche and dragged Candace all across that stage. And I wouldn't have been mad at it. I would have said, see, she ain't learned. She ain't learned. What else is in these notes? Because we almost done. I don't like the how come you aren't so emotional if you're so sorry one i ain't never hear monique say she was sorry because see i grew up in the day where if you whoop a bitch ass wait you not sorry i meant to whoop your ass we was just fighting i ain't fucking with you you know so why we gotta change our emotions and how we naturally would feel after a situation just because we on TV and because you want me to be sorry. Bitch, I ain't sorry. You was talking shit about my baby. You brought this bitch Sharice around. You know I don't fuck with her. You put your hands in my face. You had a butter knife in my face. I thought you was going to cut me up with some glass. Bitch, I whooped your ass and I ain't sorry. I'm not sorry. And I like Monique so much more for being real and saying, bitch, I ain't sorry. And I'm not emotional. This happened over a year ago. I don't even believe the therapy. Fuck all that shit. Monique ain't, Monique is not sorry. She ain't grew none of that shit y'all trying to put on Monique. Monique is not sorry. And I wouldn't be either. To me, Monique, I would quit the show. Take my last little bit of reunion money. You know you get paid for the reunion. I would go ahead and write. <laughs> I would write Candace a check, Robin and Giselle, and just whoop all three of them bitches' asses at the end of this reunion and say I quit. <laughs> Y'all can have this little bit of reunion money. You know, that's what I would do because that's what they all deserve. That's what they all deserve. And they're going to run across the right one one day. Really. Um... That's about it. Candace started crying. She's so traumatized. Monique's act like she want to say something to Candace. Candace say, no, you can't talk. Like you in mid-tier. In mid-tier, you could you could have gotten your breakthrough. Because it seemed like Monique was going to apologize to your ass. But no, Andy, I don't want Monique to talk. I'm like, bitch, you can't shut me up. Like I would have said whatever I had to say, Monique. I wouldn't play nice for this um, little bit of money, as you say. Like, I would have went up on this show, this reunion, said every fucking thing I wanted to say, 
read everybody they writes where are the rest of the fucking tabs what's on that posted tab what's on that irs tab like what else is in the fucking binder i would have read everybody they writes and then would have quit be like i don't need this little bit of money no way investment spoon you know, but that's it. Candace got to cry off the stage. And I said it, and I want to say it to be clear. Candace is not traumatized. And I, I, Giselle, you can't tell people when, how long it should take for them to not be hurt. Like, yeah, you can't tell people that, but you can't tell me a traumatized bitch talks all the shit in the world to the bitch who traumatized her. You can't make me believe that either, Giselle. So miss me with that. <sighs> Candace is crying. This is her acting. Like I told you, she did a little bit of job. She did a little bit of a good job over there on the Christmas lottery. This is Candace's acting in her last effort to get Monique kicked off the show. Fired. Let me come on the reunion. I have to still be traumatized. I need the producers and the executives to see I'm still traumatized by this. I don't know how to handle myself, but I'm going to sit over here and talk all the shit, right? But I don't know how to handle myself. I'm not over it. Ain't nobody ever whooped my ass before, but you know, my mama did just whoop my ass with a purse, but you know, never nobody outside of my mama whooped my ass before. You know, miss me with all the bullshit, okay? <laughs> miss me with all of the theatrics. <sighs> you done messed up all your good makeup. Girl... Let's get on to next week. I can't wait for um Chris Samuels to come out and give everybody their asses. Robin talking about, you wouldn't be doing it more if Juan was here. I wish Juan was here. What was Juan going to do? Get his ass put by Chris Samuels. You really want to see your fiance get his ass whooped. I, won't, I would like to see it. But see, I believe it's amazing. To, <laughs> it's amazing to me that certain people man ain't there one Giselle ain't never had no man so we expected Jamal not to be there Michael <laughs> Michael is still touching asses and he got caught on camera and he ain't trying to hear the bullshit Michael don't need this little bit of money either he just letting his wife build up her coins because he don't plan on giving her none if she leave <laughs> so you know stay over here and do what you got to do babe um Juan, why was Juan not there? Coaching a basketball game? Was it basketball season? Hell, a lot of colleges weren't even playing basketball during COVID. Hmm. <laughs> we'll see. It wasn't no damn basketball going on when they filmed this. <sighs> we'll see. It, it's just it says a lot like your whole storyline robin your whole plot line of the season which they gave you the very last corner of the season to get out was that juan was going to propose to you and this is your hallelujah moment i have a man i have my fake at like this ring look like robin's ring but <laughs> let's move on from that <laughs> This was your hallelujah moment. I did it. I got my man back and he ain't even here to celebrate it with you. I right. Let's go ahead and like, comment, and share. I ain't got nothing else to say about these chicks. Because like I said, next week it's going to go down. When does, um, when does Giselle run off and cry off the stage like she said she was going to do? Because that's what I want to see. I want to see this bitch cry. All right, like, comment, share, all that good stuff, and I will see you all later. Bye.